In the midst of the hills, there stood a peaceful Buddhist monastery. One day a young man approached the Buddhist abbot, troubled by the constant stream of thoughts of stress and worries interrupting his mind. Dear Venerable Sir, he confessed, I struggle to still my mind. My mind is constantly filled with thoughts of worries and stress. I just find it hard to focus. I'm always holding on to these thoughts. How do I let go of them? The abbot listened attentively and then reached for a glass of water nearby. Holding it up, he turned to the young man and asked, Tell me, how heavy do you think this glass of water is? Puzzled, the young man pondered and replied, Um, maybe six ounces or eight ounces? The abbot smiled gently and replied, Actually, I do not know the absolute weight of this glass of water, but I have something for you to think about. I am more concerned about how long I have to hold on to this glass of water. If I need to hold on to it for a minute, it doesn't feel like a thing. Hold on to it for an hour. My arm will start to feel sore. Hold on to it for a full day. My arm will feel immensely numb and paralyzed. In each scenario, the absolute weight of the glass of water has not changed. But the longer I need to hold it, the more unbearable the pain becomes. The young man listened attentively, as the abbot continued to explain. The weight of the glass of water is like our stress and worry. If we think about it for a minute, it's okay. Think about it for a bit longer, and it starts to hurt. Think about it all day long, and we waste the entire day. The longer we cling on to it, the more immobilized we feel. The young man nodded understandingly, and then asked, but venerable sir, I keep feeling like there is something missing in my life. How can I suppress my thoughts of stress and worries caused by the events of the outer world? The abbot listened compassionately. He began to explain. The reason we feel something is missing is because we look outside all the time and we don't look inside. The key is mindfulness. Remember, it is not to suppress or force thoughts away. Instead, acknowledge them like passing clouds in the sky. Observe their presence without attachment or judgment. By gently letting them go, you lighten the burden within. If I were to ask you to write down five things that are troubling you the most in life, the chances are you'd end up with a list of 50 things. We often feel overwhelmed by so many things, convinced that our suffering stems from these struggles. Now. Imagine I asked you to look at that list and ask yourself, am I suffering because of those things? Or because of my thoughts about those things? The young man started to contemplate at the abbot's words. The abbot continued, Upon reflection, you might realize that it's not the external factors causing the distress, but rather how you perceive and feel about them. It boils down to your thoughts and emotions. The good news is, you have the power to change those. How do I change those? The young man asked. You look at your own mind and start to figure out the habits it's running. It's a bit like computer programs. You can write new programs, change the programming, and by doing that, your life changes. This is because you're starting to work with the mind itself, rather than just the objects or people around you. You're working on your reactions, Remember, certain situations can't change, but we can change how we approach them, how we think about them, by shifting our mindset. Keep in mind, it's not about what's happening in the external world. Whether you're in a bustling city or at a peaceful monk's monastery, it's all about the mind. And if you can learn to train your mind, that's the answer to so many things, if not everything. Training your mind is a powerful tool that transcends the external environment, offering solutions and insights that can benefit you in various aspects of life. This doesn't imply shutting down all reactions and turning into a blank slate. Instead, it means acquiring the skill to navigate life differently. By gaining control over your thoughts and emotions, you equip yourself to handle situations with greater ease and resilience. 
It's about not letting external events dictate your reactions, but having the ability to respond thoughtfully and manage your emotions effectively. The young man was intrigued by the abbot's explanation. He then asked, I've tried meditation and I have failed many times. My mind always seems to wander off into the background. I start thinking about many other things. How can I silence my mind from doing this? Ah, the master acknowledged. One of the big misconceptions about meditation is that it means we are supposed to have no thoughts. People often try to meditate as if they're attempting to switch their minds off and enter a blank state, clear their minds, silence their thoughts, or shut down their minds. However, all of that doesn't work because the more you try to clear your mind, the busier it becomes. It's like if I say to you, don't think about a pink elephant, you'll think about a pink elephant. In fact, the more you try to push your thoughts down, the more they come back to the surface. You have to ask yourself, what would be the point of sitting down for 10 or 15 minutes and just going blank, only to carry on with your day again? It wouldn't really have much benefit, as you're back in the drama again. Meditation doesn't involve putting yourself in a trance or being in some kind of altered state of consciousness. It's a practice that demands effort. Your mind will wander many times, but that's okay. Just gently guide it back to your breath. Remember to breathe naturally without attempting to change it. The breath is simply a guide, an object to help you return your awareness back. Every time you do that, you get stronger at meditation. So those thoughts that distract you end up helping you come back. This is part of the exercise. Your wandering thoughts are what allow you to return. No need to feel like a failure. It's part of the process. It's like working out at the gym. The more you train, the stronger your muscles get. Similarly, the more you practice in meditation, the stronger your mind becomes. Eventually, your mind will begin to wander less and less. You'll become more focused and present with your meditation practice. It takes a bit of effort, but that's how you grow. The young man absorbed the abbot's wisdom and thanked him. He carried the teachings back into his daily life. Whether at home or amidst the bustling world, he found moments to delve into meditation. Be it during his morning routines, on the train during his commute, or waiting in line, he centered his attention on his breath, embracing the present moment. As days passed, the young man noticed a subtle shift within himself. At work, his focus sharpened, and he became less entangled by the incessant chatter of his mind. Tasks that once seemed daunting now found clarity under his newfound sense of presence. With each mindful breath, he cultivated a reservoir of tranquility, allowing him to navigate the ebb and flow of life's demands with grace. The practice wasn't about erasing thoughts, it was about acknowledging them and returning to the present. In these small moments, he discovered the immense power of being present, a skill that transformed not just his moments of meditation, but every aspect of his daily life. His commitment to these brief yet intentional pauses allowed him to rediscover clarity, focus, and a profound sense of inner peace amidst life's constant motion. In life, remember that the true art lies in embracing the present moment. Just as the young man discovered, the practice of mindfulness isn't confined to sacred spaces. It's a gift you can unwrap in the smallest of moments. Amidst the chaos of daily life, find solace in your breath. Whether at work, commuting, or waiting in line, let each inhale and exhale anchor you in the now. The simple act of being present can transform your focus, allowing you to navigate challenges with clarity. Don't view mindfulness as a rigid routine, but as a flexible companion, ready to accompany you wherever you go. Let it be a gentle reminder that amidst the hustle, you hold the power to cultivate tranquility. So take a breath, be here, and let the echoes of your own mindfulness create a melody of peace in the symphony of life. This is Dharma Stories. Thank you for watching.